Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Narudi Kuzumuki, the number one most unpredictable ninja. I hadn't read that yet. And this is, I, I think this is the version of Narudi where after he grows up and has a kid, he imbues his essence into his son's body, and uh, that's this version. So it's like a mix of burrito and Narudi. And this is actually surprisingly, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, a really good figure. Don't leave yet though, there's still stuff for me to tell you about, but it's a solid, solid release, which is good because it's one of my favorite characters of all time, and so it's nice to have a good figure. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands to the top of his hair, almost five and a half inches, to the top of where his head would probably be about five and an eighth maybe. That's gonna make him roughly, we'll call it 13, we'll call it just 13 centimeters to the top of his head and then almost 14 to his hair. Here he is up against Darwin. Darwin probably enjoys that a little bit too much, but now you have a size comparison. Okay, question of the day. Which character in all of Naruti is your favorite? I know some of you guys really like that lady Madara. Some of you are really into cousin Frank, or maybe it's the sand wizard named Gara. I don't know. Uh, you guys can let me know which one is your favorite. For me, if I'm not picking Naruti, I'm gonna go with cousin Frank. He's a pretty cool dude. Okay, so let's talk about the aesthetic on this guy. It does have some shading. That does mean it's not as consistent across all of the jumpsuit as you might like. You have some dark spots up against light spots, but there is shading throughout. And I think once you pose it around, and even if you don't, it looks pretty good. It's better than not having it. Because otherwise it would look pretty plasticky and it still kind of does, but it is a nice addition. The paint job that is there, for example, the zipper, very nicely metallic, very well painted zipper. I like that. The blue paint on there is good. The collar is nice. The face, that looks pretty good. That's clean, the eyes are really good. The the whisker things, whatever the heck that is, those are good. His uh, slingshot yo-yo combo shoulder thing, is that's, that's done pretty nicely. They didn't put as much paint on his swirly Pokeball as they could have, um, but it's still there. Actually, I think that's a molded piece, it's not even painted. This is painted, that's nice. And then they did do his feet, which is, I know, like, I guess Naruto is all about people who have like a foot fetish or are into like furries. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but they did paint that fairly cleanly, like way better than previous older, not the more recent stuff, but previous Naruto figures. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it's an aesthetically pleasing figure. He can't put his arms down all the way, which is kind of a problem for the aesthetic, but we'll get into that in articulation. But it looks pretty darn good, I have to say. I wasn't expecting it to be that solid, and it is. I'm gonna give the aesthetic an overall rating of nine out of 10, not too shabby. Now, as far as accessories go, you get five total faceplates. You get the neutral one that comes on him in the package. You get an angry version with the blue eyes. Then you get an angry version where he has grown more whiskers and fangs and has red eyes. Don't know what's going on there. Then you get one where he's doing anime face. And then you get another blue one where his mouth is open. Don't know why. Okay, as for hands, you get the two fist hands, two gripping hands, a whole slew of style pose hands, especially good to note that we have the instant transmission hands. Those are nice. Then you get some hands where he's grown out his nails. So that's creepy looking, don't care for that. All right, and then we get his kunai. That's a pretty nice little accessory. And you do get his ball of yarn, which actually has a peg for his hand, which is nice. I like that it pegs into his hand. Pretty good spread there. I think not much else we need. Uh, maybe a display stand or something, but that's good. So I will go nine out of 10. A display stand would be nice, but pretty good spread of accessories. All right, for articulation, I'm happy to report they have done what I've been requesting for years now, the double ball peg in the neck. It's starting to become more and more common. I'm taking the credit because it's an awesome joint and I've been saying it for years and now we're starting to see it. And guess what? It works nicely. Now his hair does get in the way some, but you can just pose his head however you want. Collar gets in the way too, can't help that. But with the neck on a ball peg and the head on a ball peg, you can just pose it. You don't have to try to wiggle anything around. You're not shifting a ball hinge around because it's directional. You just move the head wherever you want it and it goes. So not counting the restrictions of the particular sculpt, that's a really good neck joint, so I like that. For the shoulder, we get a butterfly joint, which is really just a couple of ball pegs and ball hinges comboed together with a floating cap. But the cool thing is, you just get really good range out of it everywhere except for going down. That's because of the way they shaped his his uh, chunky body. He's a little chungus-y. But you can bring the arms around. The butterfly part isn't as good. 
but the adjustment part is really good. You can adjust these arms kind of however you want. You don't get a lot of range going across the chest. I don't think that's what they were going for, but you do get a lot of adjustment posing for just moving the arms around in other ways. So I think that's pretty cool. You do get your bicep swivel underneath his yo-yo slingshot. You get his double jointed elbow, which is the newer type of elbow, slightly newer. Really good range, no gappiness around the outside really. And then on the inside, there are no chunks up here and only one little chunk down there. So it's one of their better looking and better functioning elbows. So that's pretty cool. Does the wrist rotate? It does, you don't really need it to, but the, the forearm part of the wrist rotates and you get this really nice ball hinge wrist which is perfectly done. I've been saying this for years too. The ball hinge needs to be the same size as the wrist or the ankle or whatever it is. They did it perfectly. It doesn't break the sculpt and you get perfect range. Love it, wonderful. They're putting some good work into this figure, I'll tell you. I wish it wasn't Naruti. All right, so torso, I don't know exactly what's going on on the inside, but I can show you. He has really good range forward. You hear that, McFarlane? You hear that, Mr. Hasbro? You can lean people forward. It is a thing that happens. So really good range going forward. Going back, it's not as good because... Oh, I pushed it too hard. That's what she said. Because I'm thinking they want you to do more at the lower than at the upper, but it doesn't lean back that far. So that's disappointing. However, I would take forward over back any day as far as leaning goes. Leaning side to side, not too bad for the lower, for the upper none okay and then since we already popped that off we'll do that this is a floating piece you do get the hinge down here for that lower joint but so far i'm not having much luck getting it to actually achieve much this is on a ball peg by the way the, his little knapsack where he keeps his snacks let's see if we can get him to lean or move okay so yeah you can move that joint back it doesn't help i mean it definitely helps you get some range you kind of get some gapping, but it does work. It's a little tricky to get that joint to go. It doesn't want to go forward. It only really goes back. So, eh, it's a little bit questionable there, but you get decent range out of it, at least going forward. Pretty good range, actually, and then decent range going back. I'll take it. For the hips, going out to the side, no problem. Almost full on splits. Definitely will take that. That is good. Going forward, he kicks better than horizontal. That is nice. Going back, his butt cheeks get in the way. I wish they would stop putting cheeks. Don't put cheeks on the fixed part. Put the cheeks on the legs, please. I mean, that's fine, but you don't need that. You could have much better range. Thigh swivel is a thigh swivel. That's good. Double jointed knees work nicely, just like the elbows. Pretty darn good looking knee, good functioning knee. You do have the old style joint back here, though, where you get all the extra cuts. So you can see in con contrast how much better that looks. Much better that looks back there because you don't have all those cut up parts than that looks. I personally don't carry the way I think they were always fine, but if they can make them look better like they did here, they should, and they did, so that's good. Now, cool thing is you can rotate the leg here if you want. You get a ball peg just under the cuff of his ninja boot sandal thing, which is just nonsense. So that's good, so you get rotation and hinge, or no, no rotation and ball peg here. Rotation here for the ankle itself, you can go all the way back. These are such good ankles all the way forward. Why can't Dragon Ball figures have good ankles? You get your ankle rocker. It's like a traditional ankle ankle rocker almost. So perfectly good range there. Toe hinge. These joints are all a little bit loose on this guy, but in terms of the engineering, this is exactly how ankles should be. You don't even need this here. Look at that. Oops. That's just another ball peg I went too far on. Go all the way back and all the way forward, and it looks good. Like, just do that every time on all the figures. It's really nice. All right, guys, so articulation on this guy, pretty darn good. I wouldn't say it's perfect. There are a couple weird things going on here. Like, you can't bring the shoulders down. You can't do a perfect butterfly joint, and the torso's a little strange, but functional. So I'm only gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go nine. It's pretty darn good. Like, if I have to spend money on Rudy figures, at least, they're gonna be, it, not they're gonna be, at least I'm happy when they're good. I'd hate to buy them just to review them and not actually enjoy them as a figure objectively. So I'm pretty pleased with this. It has good articulation, it has good accessories, and it has good aesthetic. Yeah, if I have to buy a Naruti figure, at least I'm glad when they're good. So that's good. All right, guys, I'm gonna give this one a final rating overall of nine out of 10. It is a really, really strong release. And it's kind of upsetting because the last two Dragon Ball figures I reviewed, which is the franchise I actually like, weren't very good at all. <laughs> Pan was horrible and Broly was just uh, just on her heels. 
This one blows both of those away. I'm pretty sure he was cheaper than both of them. I can't remember now, but this is a solid release. So for all you Naruti people out there, if you made it this far, be happy. It's a good one. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs up will do. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. In the meantime, keep collecting.